Yes, Mr. Kathy. Good morning. Good morning. The July 10th, uh, 2018 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order, and we are pleased to have with us this morning Mr. Benny Waldroff, our chief appraiser here with us this morning to lead us in our invocation. And after the invocation, please remaining, uh, remain standing for our pledge to the flag. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you with grateful hearts, thankful for all the blessings of life that you shower down upon us day by day. As we come to you, dear Lord, today, where there's a lot of difficulties going on in throughout the world, a lot of sickness, a lot of struggles, we continue to remember the children in the cave and the rescue efforts underway, and they almost got them all out. We're just thankful for that. But that's just one problem, dear Lord. There's so many throughout the world. We just ask you to be with those that are sick, those that are hurting. Use us where we can to help those situations, dear Lord, to make the world a better place. Local government can be an agent that you use to help, dear Lord. You, we ask you to continue to be with Douglas County. All of our employees, our leadership, department heads, government officials, guide each one in their tasks day by day in the work of helping and making the community a better place to live. Now, dear Lord, we especially lift up this meeting of the Board of Commissioners. Guide them, dear Lord, in their deliberations so that each decision they make is in accordance with your will. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Waldron, for being here this morning, leading us in our uh, invocation. And good morning again. And we are delighted that you have joined us, and we appreciate your participation in local government. I uh, just would like to acknowledge our Mayor Pro Tem here this morning, um, Mayor Pro Tem Richard Siegel. If you wave your hand, thank you for being here. Uh, this morning, Clerk, do we have public comment? Yes, ma'am, we had one individual. Okay, we have one individual who signed up this morning, or one citizen, I should say, Professor uh, John Tomaski. Um, Professor, before you come up, I would just like to state we respect um, our citizens' right to address their government in this meeting. However, as a chair, I am forced to, uh, uh, I intend to enforce our three-minute rule uh, for this meeting to run efficiently and effectively. Once you reach your uh, sentence, uh, I will ask you to wrap your sentence up at the three minute uh, limit and um, we will go from there. This, uh, your subject matter must be germane to the agenda and there will be no personal attacks uh, against personnel or officials uh, and you should, uh, it, and that should be handled in another forum uh, other than this body. Mr. or should I say Professor Tomaski, are you here? There you are, Could come forward please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning to all. Morning. Uh, items 16 and 19 have to do with expenditure, one from SPLAS funds, the other presumably from uh, the general fund. And uh, it's uh, good that relatively small amounts, as indicated on the agenda, come before this body. It enhances openness and accountability. Uh, however, uh, again, uh, Fiduciary responsibility, uh, to, to some extent, is in the eye of the beholder. And it's good that there are five commissioners because that helps to keep things between the lines, not going off onto the shoulder and certainly not going off across the median into oncoming traffic. And when we uh, consider projects, especially having different points of view and the public mandate of thousands of people that put each of you in office, 
one can be um, so involved with an issue that um, there are sometimes what are called popularly pet projects that get into it, and there can be other instances where um, financial uh, considerations are somewhat mitigated by other considerations. And uh, in the realm of pet projects, uh, some of these can very well be very productive and useful to the community at large. Uh, the vice chairman has, uh, for several years, advocated mental health care. And uh, when we talk about the disadvantaged, uh, although there are private sector organizations, including churches, government has to be the last resort. And also for um, domestic violence. But there are others uh, which may not uh, be as valuable. So I am indicating simply that when we're talking about fiduciary responsibility, the collegiality is important that we can stay between the lines. And if uh, we consider what external help is available, the uh, Carl Vincent Institute for Government, which is an academic unit of the University of Georgia, has faculty very well experienced in many areas that are relevant to government, and they in fact do make physical audits, reviews of county government departments and ancillary agencies at the request of the county. So rather than go to commercial consultants, uh, and in this, re in this regard, I again compliment the vice chairman, uh, in the finance committee, they have very highly qualified financial consultants, uh, gentlemen with uh, PhDs in econometrics, University of Chicago, and other prominent universities. But Carl Vincent Institute also has excellent faculty. And broadly, sometimes we have agencies of government, especially ancillary agencies, who resort to uh, confusing legitimate statistical analysis with survey monkey. Mm -hmm. So from SurveyMonkey to PhDs from University of Chicago and Econometrics, we go from the ridiculous to the sublime. So again, uh, in the future, I would suggest considering the Carl Vincent Institute and also the College of City and Regional Planning of Georgia Tech, which is rated number eight in that area in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much this morning, uh, Mr. Tomaski. We appreciate your contribution to county government, and this matter will be taken under advisement. Next, uh, Board of Commissioners, you have the minutes here. We, um, yesterday in our work session, I requested that you take a look at the minutes, and uh, you have the minutes of the commission meeting of June 19, 2018 in the work session, and the executive session minutes of June 2018, uh, 18, 2018. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand as presented. Um, new business items, we have four new business items today. Uh, tab number four is a reappointment of Betty Danley and Julia McElahan Hannon to the Family and Children's Services Board effective immediately. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. Clerk, do I need to just call a verbal? Uh, no, give me just one second. Okay. Okay, there it is. Thank you. The vote is unanimous and the motion carries. Thank you so much, uh, Clerk. 
Uh, tab number five, reappointment of Itia Pounds and Shannon Bentley to Shannon Bentley to the Douglas County Library Board effective immediately. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Um, please uh, prepare to cast your votes. We have a unanimous approval this morning to move forward with the re reappointment of Atia Pounds and Shannon Bentley to the Douglas County Library Board effective immediately. Tab number six. Authorization for the county to acquire right of way of property and easements for parcel 01600250056 related to the Highway 5 southbound left uh, turn lane project and the parcels transportation improvement project and authorized, I think I skipped a whole line, parcels 0374182005 and then 0375182001 and 0374182001 related to the Maxim Road uh, uh, State Route 6 Transportation uh, Improvement Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Um, Board of Commissioners, you have heard um, me read this item, uh, this new business item. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. We have a motion and a um, Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. <laughs> Any discussion on yes, this particular item? Uh, Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for being on point here. Can you, um, Director Valentin, can you go into a little bit more detail on what these are? Just for the record, I know we discussed this at length yesterday during the work session, but this is the legislative vote, so let's make sure we get it on record as well, please. Absolutely. Uh, good morning, That's Madam Chair. Good Commissioners. morning. Uh, these are four parcels, uh, two different projects that we have been able to um, uh, agree on a, a purchase price. The parcels are slivers of land along the frontage of the property. And these are required for the widening, uh, sometimes the construction of sidewalks or slopes. Uh, some of them are for right of way, others are for just easements uh, to be able to use the land during construction and then restore it and, and build the project. So, this is uh, making progress in the acquisition process for the two projects, uh, the one on Maxim Road and the one on Highway 5. Okay, so I'm, I'm be sensitive that uh, these are two separate projects in two different districts, so let's just focus on the Maxim Road for the record and, and allow my colleague to weigh in if, if she so chooses to. Um, so talk about the Maxim Road. Um, how far along are we with regarding design? I know this is a project that has been of interest. Um, BM before you got here. So can you give us an update on where we stand on that and just sort of an overall timeline? And I'm not, I won't make this long. I just want to do it for the record. Uh, absolutely, uh, Commissioner. In fact, uh, that project is pretty much uh, wrapping up the design component. And as soon as we uh, complete the right-of-way acquisition, the project will be packaged for construction, for certification for construction. Uh, this coming Friday, if memory serves me, either this Friday or next Friday, we have a review with the Georgia Department of Transportation uh, for the final plans. So by that time, we would have developed uh, all of the changes necessary, uh, all of the updates, and the plans would be reviewed to make sure that they comply with all the criteria. And then if any deficiencies are found, they would be updated and then that set of plans would be the one that would be certified for construction. For construction. So, again, this is the um, Maxim Road, Thornton Road intersection, that whole project for the most part? That is that, correct. All right, and just for the record, this is something that a couple of years ago, um, GDOT had an open house, um, and we, we had um, citizens come out and weigh in formally, um, as, as well as a commissioner from Cobb County. It's important to note those who live in that area, recognizing that Thornton Road is only second to I-20 as it relates to traffic that comes through Douglas County. It's that much volume. It's not just truck traffic, but it's residential. Cobb County pours into Douglas County through Maxim Road, and obviously from the um, SR6 coming from the north side, um, obviously we got Paulding traffic as well that comes down, et cetera. So that, that convergence right there on I-20, it's brutal in the morning um, trying to get across. So this is something that we've been working on quite some time, um, a lot of coordination. 
uh, uh, it is a public safety issue. Uh, we've had several deaths that have been, um, we, we've sort of documented over time, um, pedestrian to vehicle um, deaths, um, vehicle to vehicle. And so it's something that obviously is important to us. Uh, we know that sidewalks are important in this area as well. So I'm encouraged to finally see that we're, we're moving. It takes time. I mean, it's just one of those where, like most projects that, that are here that we follow over time regarding transportation, they just take time and it takes a lot of coordination. So I appreciate you coming in and sort of coordinating this. So um, last question is that um, timeline that once this gets through this process, um, 18 months, how long would it take to get done where the people can actually see that we've improved that intersection, we've widened it, we've, we've redid the corners, um, now we can travel a little bit more safely? Uh, I would estimate, uh, Commissioner, that, that uh, the process would, uh, towards the fall, we would be advertising this project for construction. It is possible that, uh, that the, the, the work could start before the end of the year, but I would anticipate if it does, it would be uh, just the initial stages of construction. More likely, though, it would be uh, construction starting in the spring of 2019. And then once that starts, perhaps a year, maybe a little more, maybe 15 months to complete the project. Right, so we're into 2020, almost 2021. So I won't say anything. I'll just keep it, keep it, do like we've been doing. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield. That's good enough. Thank you, Miguel. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, Commissioner Guider. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Director Valentine, uh, would you give us an update on the Highway 5? This is southbound Highway 5 from I-20 onto Douglas. We're adding a, another turn lane onto Douglas Boulevard toward the mall. Cer um, certainly. That project is also... Uh, pretty far along in the design phase, and we are into the right-of-way acquisition. One of the parcels that's on here now, the other one was, is the subject of, of another action item on the agenda today. That, those two parcels are the only ones required for that project. So once that process is done, uh, we will also be moving forward to finalize the design um, and basically the same schedule towards the fall. We would be packaging that for advertising for construction and then construction will probably start in the spring. Okay, this is a state project, so that they will correct. be doing the work, uh, but uh, they don't let the bid, they have not let the bid yet no. uh, to actually start construction. No, that will be later this year. That will be later this year? Yes, ma'am. And then they'll probably start on it sometime next year? Some, sometime in early spring. Okay, and this will not affect the uh, opposite corner uh, as far as right away, because we've talked about that in, another, in our splash project. And I just wondered, seems like we'd have to have a little bit more room uh, with two turn lanes there. So. Actually, it, it, does not, it does not impact um, that side. Um, the, uh, that is, uh, as you know, subject of, of a different effort. And uh, this project can be constructed fully within the scope that it was designed uh, to provide uh, without affecting the curb line on that side. It's going to be tight, though. <laughs> it, it will be. There will be some restriping uh, of the existing cartway, yeah. uh, but it will not affect uh, the curb line on that side. All right. And uh, completion probably 2020. That's a fair assessment. <clears throat> All right, I yield back. Thank you. Okay. Just one. Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah, just one, just one. So going back to Commissioner's Guider's point though. So one side won't affect the other. Correct. Are we gonna try to, is the plan to try to do these roughly uh, close to or around about the same time, even though I know one doesn't affect the other and dollars and cents are coming from two different sources. So kind of in terms of timing, uh, th they're not going to follow the same track. Uh, Got it. One project, uh, the one that we're discussing, the southbound dual left turn lanes has been in design for a couple of years. Yes. The northbound turn lane has not been designed. Uh, and so no effort has gone into that as of yet, although it's been recognized as a need. Right. Uh, there was some discussion at one time to try and couple those projects. Uh, however, because the southbound project was 
much further along, it was decided not to encumber it and allow it to proceed to construction okay. and, and leave the other one as a separate effort. Got it. So, so they will be, they both will be done, and one will be done before the other, or would it be within an 18, 12 month time frame? Because um, you can't speak on the other one, I guess, because yeah, it's, it's at, not. At as this point, at this point, uh, there, I don't have enough information to know what the timeline for construction. There's, there are decisions that decisions that need to be made by the county to to move that effort along yeah. that are unrelated to this other south. Understood. Line. Understood. Thank you. Appreciate it. I yield back. Okay. Any other discussion from the Board of Commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Guider? I just wanted to add one thing. <clears throat> Some people may be saying what good is it going to be just to add another turn lane, but what the, they don't understand is it will uh, speed up the light signaling. And uh, so uh, Tra traffic from all different directions would be able to move faster because the lights would be, uh, you'll, you'll clear this lane faster so it speeds up the, the uh, other lanes coming that's, from other directions. That's a very good technical analysis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was technical. But <laughs> Thank you, I yield. Okay, and uh, I would just like to say that Highway 5 is looking really very nice with the paving uh, project that's in place. Do you agree, Commissioner? Uh, yes, it looks but that nice. is done by the state. Uh, I hate to mess it up. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. So just wanted to commend you on that, uh, uh, Director Valentine. But other than that, I think that's it for you. All right. Thank you. We have a we have a motion and a second. Uh, please feel free to cast your votes. We have a unanimous vote to move forward, forward with the authorization for the county to acquire the right of way of the properties mentioned uh, earlier. Um, tab number seven, uh, authorization to renew the annual contract with Amanda Bryant as executive director of Douglas Corps and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, uh, again, uh, you've heard this, authorization to renew the annual contract. Do we have a motion? So to move. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second, and any discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please cast your votes. We have a unanimous uh, vote uh, to move forward uh, with the uh, Authorization to renew the annual contract with Amanda Bryant as Executive Director of Douglas Corps. Next, we move to the consent agenda, which is, uh, we'll start. Please note that all items are subject to final legal review. Tab number eight, resolution authorizing the filing of condemnation petitions to acquire the right required right of way and easements on various parcels for the purpose of facilitating the construction of roadway projects. Tab number nine, resolution to call for an election of the voters of Douglas County to authorize Douglas County to permit and regulate Sunday sales of distilled spirits of alcoholic beverages for beverage purposes by the drink from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., approving the form of ballot to be used in such election and for other purposes. Tab number 10, authorization to create a new contract attorney position in the Juvenile Public Defender's Office and amend the budget to cover salary and, and not more than $54,000 plus benefits and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 11, authorization to accept a, CJ, a CJCC grant in the amount of $448,937 with a match of $49,882 for the Douglas uh, Circuit Accountability Courts Drug and Mental Health Court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. <laughs> Tab number 12, authorization to create a position, a new position of accountability uh, court case manager to accommodate for the increased growth in the accountability courts and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. 
Tab number 13, authorization to approve a multi-year licensing agreement with Chestnut Health Systems for the use of global appraisals of individual needs, assessment instruments, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 14, authorization to approve a contract for Lalita Baye as an assistant um, public defender in state court in order to fill a, a vacancy and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 15, Authorization to renew the contract for administrative solutions for the administration of inmate medical claims and inmate reinsurance for the period of July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 16, authorization to approve a contract with Kimley Horn in the amount of $9,800, funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds to complete work elements of the Sweetwater Master Plan to be submitted to the Atlanta Regional Commission for acceptance as a livable communities initiative, which is an LCI, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Tab number 17, authorization to accept funds in the amount of $3,447.69 from the Georgia Trauma Commission 2018 round two grant grants and amend the fire department's budget. Tab number 18, authorization to enter in an agreement with target our solutions learn an LLC for web hosting of online continuing education portal for the fire department at a cost of $16,631 and pay with SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. And last but not least, tab number 19, authorization to approve a car allowance agreement for Valerie Vi, assistant district attorney, and Brett Adams, assistant district attorney, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. That concludes our consent agenda, Board of Commissioners. Uh, do we have a motion to approve this consent agenda? So moved. Okay, we, we have a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any particular item, Commissioner? <laughs> Robinson, Vice Chair. I had to pause on that. I didn't know what we were doing. Okay. All right. Yes, I got a couple of them, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to just take them in reverse. The very last one regarding um, the district attorney's request for um, um, car allowances. Did we get confirmation when um, the two state employees started with the county? I just wanted for the record. Uh, one of the things we want to make sure is that while we recognize that certain officers have authority to, to hire at, at will, it's important that we who are responsible for providing um, financial support have to make sure that everything is aligned. So we just want to com confirm, you know, what is the process by which um, HR is notified and therefore it comes to the county administrator to let us know that our car allowance should be applied. Can you all give us some, a timeline on that? We were supposed to follow up from yesterday, please. County manager or HR, do we? Yes, well, as far as the vehicle use policy, yes. the, the positions that are listed in the consent agenda are included in that vehicle use policy. Okay. So, so those positions are, are qualified. And yes, sir. Uh, do we immediately, and we collectively, um, car allowance, it, it, there's not like a, a, a vesting period. In other words, as soon as you're hired, you're eligible for it, or is it a request? I mean, how does it work? Just trying to put the a request from the department head or the elected official. Got it. Okay. All right. That, that was all, but um, um, I'll, I'll let it go. I'll find out um, the information I need. When did they start afterwards? But you did um, conclude for us uh, regarding the car allowance. Thank you. All right. I'm going to jump down to number 16. Um, this one deals with, um, is Ron Roberts? Here. Good morning, commissioners. How are you doing today? Good morning. <coughs> Take a little bit, um, because it warrants, um, for the record, can right. you explain a little bit about what this is all about again? Sure. Because we're using funds for something that wasn't pre-programmed prior. Can you let us know, please? All right, yeah. So last year, the Sweetwater Master Plan went through and was approved. And this was a, uh, by the Douglas County Economic Development Authority, um, hired Kimley Horn to, to put this document together, which came before you uh, last year. The, uh, when I started, I looked at the document and realized that it had the potential as a livable centers initiative, which would open up some funding opportunities on down the road for the county as it related to transportation, specific transportation items in the corridor. Um, the 
Livable Centers Initiative has so far done $172 million worth of projects and $172 million worth of projects in 105 uh, areas and 63 LCIs around the region. Um, I know that uh, the, the city itself has three separate LCIs. They've been able to benefit to $2.8 million worth of transportation projects and enhancements and in fact won an award in 2014 for, um, for LCI in, uh, Innovation Achievement Award. So the, the funding today would be to in, in, uh, bring Kimley Horn in to complete the elements that are required. I've already spoken with the Atlanta Regional Commission and they're amenable to this document being brought forward as a, as a grandfathered LCI project for Douglas County. Uh, the work elements that would be required would be basically uh, adding an, an additional chapter. It's a five-year horizon on transportation, five-year, there's just elements that are needed to bring this document to where it needs to be for the submission. Um, I actually have uh, a Beth Tucker from Kimley Horn. She worked on the project here to answer any specific <coughs> questions that you may have about that. Um, but. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's what they ask here today, is if we can use the $9,800 from SPLOS Fund to add the, the elements into this plan, we, can, we would have the benefit of being able to tap into some $300 million worth of potential funding on down the road. I know there's not much in that corridor currently, but this is, uh, I think the terminology I heard yesterday was, there was some concern we might be putting the apples, I mean the, the cart before the horse. This is strictly, providing us some funding to build the cart and buy the horse on down the road if we want to do so. Also, there was an, an, another question I wanted to address as it related to the, 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 you know, every five years, as long as there's activity that, that is required to keep the LCI in place, that just gives uh, Douglas County the benefit of being able to have those funds there when they're ready to utilize them. I appreciate you. I'm going to be pick, pick quick, but I'm sure my, my colleagues are going to weigh in on other uh, issues on the consent agenda, and I, I would like her to be on standby, but I'm going to, I'll, I'll make a comment real quick. Sure. Um, th this, and this is important, um, you know, when I came on board and back in 08, 09, we were going through the midst of a recession. At the same time, it was, it was a function of, you got to think about what District 2 was really about. It was about light you know, industrial warehouses, right? That's all, and pretty much it was in the city. That was the business model. We just gonna click them. We're gonna build these warehouses and that was it. But that was prime real estate. It was not much thought for future. It wasn't master plan. It was just sort of, we evolved, right? So past, as, we, as all of us know, and at least on the district commissioner side, we've had to work through a, a, a period of time of really planning for the future. And we had to sort of do it a little bit differently. Brought in new personnel. We had to think differently. We had to sort of, plan differently. So here we are, uh, again, this is something that is the hand that has been dealt. You've got this light industrial right up against residential. And, and, and how, how do we now reshape this, right? So we're not trying to maintain. I can remember it wasn't too long ago when this whole area was called slum and blight. Ooh, they need to redevelop this. And I remember all that conversation. And so here we are, we're now trying to move it forward because we recognize it wasn't the best. It had evolved, it aged. Mm -hmm. I mean, Thornton Road aged. Right? And so with all that commerce, it was just being worn down by trucks. But you had residents that were paying taxes, you got commercials paying taxes, and we needed, to we, we needed to redevelop it. And so here we are, we've got this master plan, and this is where I'm going. Um, and I appreciate you guys bringing it to, to the table, um, transportation, you, um, Chris Pumphrey from Economic Development, was to take us to a whole other level of planning. And some of the citizens that were involved, especially out of District 2 who participated in that process, has now become the model of how to plan this county. Right, and so it, it's important that I appreciate you um, leveraging the LCI and say, "Oh, there's a way to enhance this." Because one of the things that we also talked about as a foundation is leveraging our local dollars to go after state and federal, and we've been consistent with that. And so again, we're just posturing for the future. How do we enhance our hand? Um, and we can be thoughtful. And we we can play at this level. Again, I, I can speak for District Two is that as we begin to continue to attract these top tier companies who who want to locate here and they want to live here, they want to play here. We've got to provide the infrastructure, we've got to provide the planning, we've got to provide all, all these elements to sort of, uh, you know, maintain. It's one thing to attract, it's another to maintain. So I appreciate the thoughtfulness. Uh, I'll use that as a foundation. So um, can you ask our guests to come up, please? And sure. I'll ask a quick question. Sure. And I'm going to yield out of this. 
All right, my question to you is, um, talk about the elements at the ARC. What is that process that we're going through now? Sure, it's largely an administrative process. The LCI program has a very um, formulaic format that they require their documents to be in. Since this plan wasn't originally envisioned as an LCI, basically our um, projects are not in that same table format. So we need to get our projects into that format. There may be a little bit of research and analysis necessary to get us there. There may be a few columns or items that weren't originally thought of inside the LCI, inside of the master plan to make it an LCI. So it's largely uh, an administrative process to get it into the format that ARC needs to accept it into the LCI program. But it's not changing anything that's already been adopted, anything in the plan. We're just putting our projects that we've already approved into their format. Okay, so it's not another going back out to the public. This is all internal within the administration. This is correct. It would just require an amendment on your part once that format is done, just to say yes, we approve it in this format. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Sure. Um, uh, that's all I needed, Madam Chair. I'm going to go ahead and yield the floor. Thank you. Okay. Be before I uh, call on Commissioner Guider, just uh, on tab number 16, and I need legal counsel to uh, help on this. I read it wrong. Instead of being funded through the splashes, nine thousand eight hundred one of fun we want to fund it through the budget. So do I need to reread that or what happened? That's what I need to do. 16. Yes, yeah, 16, tab number 16. Well, there's already a motion pending and a second, Madam Chair. Right. You'll either have to have an amendment which would take precedence by vote or you'd have to defeat the pending motion on the table and have a new motion. Okay, okay. I'll amend it after we get to Okay, yeah. we'll do that. Thank Did you. you make the motion? Yeah, no. okay. okay. Commissioner Guider. Uh, yes, and I wanted to speak on uh, Item 16, it's called uh, the LCI is, is livable centers. So uh, I assume it's directed toward the residential. And that's why I thought it ought to come out of the budget rather than splash and the economic development uh, uh, $10 million that was set aside for, for that. Um, this is not economic development if you're talking about trails and sidewalks and things like that. So, and the uh, direct road in this plan from um, the, the main road out to the residential part is a no truck road. So it doesn't have anything to do with the uh, economic development. And I just think it just needs to come out of the regular budget until uh, such time as we, we see fit that we want sidewalks inside the commercial area where the warehouses are. I don't think you're gonna have the truck drivers uh, walking the sidewalks and whatever, but we don't have any retail in there yet. So that's why I thought it ought to come out of the... Um, and, and if I can respond back to that, uh -huh. the elements of the Sweetwater Master Plan does have a residential component. Uh, option A has it where the residences are backing up to the back of Sweetwater Park, and that's kind of differentiated from the commercial. That's what I, that's the area I'm talking about. That's and a road that is proposed, but it hasn't been built. That's correct. But it's a no truck road. That that whole uh, strip there mm -hmm. is a no truck ro uh, road. That is one component of the plan. The livable centers isn't just directly at residential. It's where places where we live, work, and play. So it's the integration of all of those types: the residential, the commercial, the industrial. How we sort of build communities that we don't have to drive everywhere to get to. So this is putting in some of those facilities to help facilitate that, but those are facilities that are useful mm -hmm. in an employment center as well as in a residential center. Well, I'm not, I'm not against the LCI. Sure. I'm just saying that I feel it should not come out of the splosh sure. at this point because I don't see the economic development side of it. I think it ought to come out of, you have it in your budget, right? Yes, yeah. ma'am, we, uh, we uh, had a, uh, BIR from our predecessor for FTE that was not funded, and, um, but uh, yeah, so we, yeah. We, we can do it that way. Yeah, and, yes. I, and I would just like to, uh, if um, the vice chair would be uh, acceptable to amend this uh, one item to come out of the general fund. Yeah, yeah there would be a, a motion to amend and a second and a, okay. a vote on the motion to amend. Right. What, do I make the motion? Or does but, but this is on the consent agenda, right? It, right. That's a those two. So we almost have to pull this out and vote. What are you For saying? Because that right, right now you have under Roberts Rules of Order a pending main motion that's been seconded. Right. It's in debate. If you would like to before the vote, 
change some item in the vote, you would need a motion to amend that's seconded and voted on, and that would take precedent. It would be voted on first. For instance, if you're changing an item in 16, be a motion to change that item in 16 to whatever, seconded, debated, voted on, and then there'd be another motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. I got it, Madam Chair. I, I'll, I'll wait to the end and let everybody exhaust the consent, though. That's not to confuse the motion, because I'm going to have to do the whole thing. Do I make that motion, or uh, the chair, vice chair who made the original motion? Anybody can make a motion okay. to amend. And I would like to make a motion to amend item 16 to uh, replace uh, the verbiage about 2016 splash funds to uh, 2018 budget funds. Okay, second. Ma Madam Chair, mm -hmm. technically it should be the uninked fund. The okay. uninked fund? Yes, okay. ma'am. <laughs> Planning zoning is in the uninked fund. Just to, just to make sure we're clear So amended <laughs> to include uninked fund. You got that? Okay. So, Madam Clark, you have a motion pending on 16 to amend and change it to the uh, general fund uninc fund for 18, correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has there been a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, you're in debate now on the motion to amend, Madam Chair. Okay, we have a motion and a second in discussion before I move forward. We have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes for this particular item. We'll you just want to verbal. Okay. Right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 So three. One opposed. Okay. Three, one. Okay. Thank you. The motion carries. All right. Um, any other discussion on the consent agenda? Well, are we? Th are you through with the agenda items? I still have the floor, I think. You do. I just wanted to address another item, if I, if I may. Mm -hmm, you may. And uh, Director Valentine, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you to come back up, please. Are you at liberty uh, to discuss the projects that these uh, condemnations uh, would be a part of? Certainly, uh, uh, two of, the, there's a total of three projects. Two of them are related to the first item that we discussed. So the Highway 5 southbound dual left turn lane, the Maxim Road, Thornton Road intersection. The, and could I the, just stop you on, on the Highway 5? Are these slithers? Of Th they are. They're, they're not the whole parcel. Absolutely not. It's just not. A, a little footage right there. Exactly. All right. Go ahead. And the third project uh, is related to the Stuart Mill Yancey Road intersection uh, improvement project. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And that that is in my district too. And that project has stopped because of this. That is correct. And so we, we're we're kind of at a point where we got to. Uh, We've had no response from the property owners, so that's why we're having to go this other route. Uh, we've, had, we've had some discussion and some back and forth with the property owner. However, um, they have uh, not agreed to uh, the, the uh, appraised value that we offered them, and they have requested additional items that we cannot agree to, therefore, uh, the option for moving the process forward is through condemnation. Are these also just slithers of property? They are. They are uh, slivers across the frontage and easement areas. Mm -hmm. uh, both of the parcels related to that project are unimproved. Do So uh, there's no uh, interference with driveway there's, or, or, there's nothing, or nothing constructed any on water it. lines or whatever? So uh, this is vacant property that we're talking about. That is correct. All right. All right. I yield back. Okay. Uh, I don't. Okay. I don't you don't have anything, Commissioner Mitchell? Okay. All right. We have. So, uh, Madam Chair, just for technical purposes, you can't use your voting board because we've now had an amendment. So uh, on the table is the approval of the consent agenda as amended, and you'll need to take a voice vote. That's correct. Okay, do we have a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda as amended? 
So, Ma Madam Chair, mm -hmm. the, the main motion is still pending, so it's already been, motion. you already have a motion, a second, right. amendment, motion, second, and vote. So what's before you is a vote on the consent agenda as now amended. Right. Okay. All right. There is a vote before us again, y'all, uh, on the consent agenda as amended. Um, please prepare. We have a, a second. Well, we have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes or please. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm so accustomed to the technology. I'm spoiled. So all in favor, say aye. That was a unanimous vote. Uh, so thank you all for the consent agenda. Okay. So we'll move forward. That was, I had to, I was tangled in a way up for a second, but I, but I apologize for that. Uh, we would like our uh, communications coordinator to come up, Lena Hardy, and read the announcements for us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we have three announcements. Uh, keep Douglas County Beautiful and Keep Douglasville Beautiful are now accepting volunteers for the Douglasville Douglas County Community Cleanup at Arbor Place Mall from 9 a.m. to 12 noon on July 28th. If you are interested in volunteering, please contact the Department of External Affairs at tstuartstanley at co.douglas.ga.us. Advanced voting has already started in the election office on the first floor of the Douglas County Courthouse, and it will continue through July 20th during normal business hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. There will be additional advanced voting locations during the week of July 16th through July 20th. These locations include the Old Courthouse, Deer Lick Park, Boundary Waters Aquatic Center, and Dog River Library. For those Douglas County citizens who missed the opportunity to participate in advanced voting, all regular poll places will be open on election day on July 24th. For more information, contact the Voter Registration Office at 770-920-7213 or email at bdofelections at co.douglas.ga.us. And last but not least, the, tag and tag, the Tax and Tag Office and Appraisal Department are now open at the new Douglas County Government Annex. The Douglas County Government Annex is located on 6200 Fairburn Road, Douglas, Ville, Georgia at 30134. Thank you Thank so you. much, uh, Communications Coordinator. Thank you so much, uh, Lena. Uh, any other questions from the Board of Commissioners? Mad Madam okay. Chair, with respect to uh, the resolution on the referendum, we'll need all of y'all to sign off on that resolution. If you'll see the clerk before you leave today, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Yeah. <laughs> any other questions or concerns or any discussions from the Board of Commissioners? Yeah, Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Robinson, any yeah, other announcements? Yeah, very quickly, and again, just trying to be consistent about uh, how we communicate to the public. Uh, we have a, uh, a finance committee meeting on Monday. Uh, it will be July 23rd at 2 p.m. in the Board of Commissioners um, boardroom on third floor. Again, at one more time, just trying to be consistent and letting people know about what's going on. We know it's during the day. But nonetheless, um, please check out the meeting minutes and so forth about what goes on regarding local government. The very next day at 2 p.m. on July 24th, um, um, again, in the Board of Commissioners um, boardroom, there will be a Transportation Committee meeting. Uh, please come out and participate in that. That particular um, uh, committee is filmed. And so if you can't be there in person, you can always take advantage of that in sort of a, um, a video um, archive and take a look at that. But again, we just want to let people know, uh, Madam Chair, about what's going on and that not mm -hmm. just this voting meeting um, and not just work sessions, but there's other avenues in which you could participate and listen in on and know what's going on. It's all about transparency. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Okay, any other Ma announcements? Madam Chair, yes. I just wanted to make a correction. The Finance Committee was changed to Jul July 19th. Very good. Instead of the 23rd. Okay. Well, thank you. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> any other? Uh, notices or announcements before I move forward. Again, thank you all for participating in yeah. local government. And with this being said, uh, this agenda is uh, satisfied and this meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.